Hello and welcome back. In today's lectures, we will be looking at hypothesis testing. So, we will be uh, defining different types of hypothesis and how to handle uh, different problem statements, post the questions raised in the problem statements in form of suitable hypothesis and uh, then define a test statistic, use the appropriate statistical distribution, find the probability and based on the uh, probability we make certain conclusions. So, the references for this topic are the books written by Ramachandran and Sokos, Mathematical Statistics with Applications from Academic Press and the prescribed textbook by Montgomery and Runger, Applied Statistics and Probability for Engineers, 5th edition from Wiley, India. So, where do we apply this uh, hypothesis testing procedures? It is an important tool in decision making. The person making a decision may be the manager, it may be the uh, owner of a company or it may be even a researcher. What decision does a researcher make? He performs experiments, finds the uh, response as a function of the uh, variables he changed during the course of experimentation and the decision he makes are which of the variables are important and which of them do not have a bearing on the response of the process. So, there can be different types of uh, decision makers. So, statistical inference involves hypothesis testing. I really have not told you what is meant by a hypothesis, I will do so shortly and parameter estimation. A random sample is taken from the population and suitable statistics are obtained. Again we are going to use the random sample. Since the random sample is uh, being used in so many places in so many different ways, it is important that we ensure that the sample we have taken is indeed random and uh, the uh, sample elements are independent of one another and follow the same probability distribution. Again we have to emphasize that uh, we do not know the parameters of the population. We do not even know the uh, nature of the population, whether it is having a normal uh, distribution or it is having a skewed distribution. The random sample is used to uh, make decisions on the sample distributions of the means, the sample distribution of the variances and so on. We have uh, seen that uh, the uh, normal distribution, the t distribution may be used in the uh, tests carried out on the uh, mean the enquiry is made on the population parameter mu. We use the chi squared and uh, the uh, f distributions to make enquiries regarding the uh, variances of the population and also the ratio of variances. So, the sample statistics in the form of sample mean and sample variance have a lot of significance. Another important thing is even though we are using the sample information, we are always querying about the population parameters. So, the sample information is used to make decisions on the parameters of an unknown population. We do not know the mu and sigma squared, 
And so, we use the uh, sample information as point uh, estimates of the population parameters and uh, then we make certain decisions. How we make the decisions, we will see shortly. Obviously, it is impractical to use the entire population for decision making. So, we are uh, forced to resort to sampling and use a sample information to arrive at a decision. Usually, only one sample is taken from a given population. So, I was just introducing the term hypothesis testing. What is really meant by a hypothesis? If you look at the uh, uh, dictionary, some of the synonyms of hypothesis are guess, assumption, speculation, suggestion and initial conjecture. Basically, a hypothesis expresses a statement. It concerns with the probability distribution of a random variable and its associated parameters. So, the hypothesis deals with the population parameters either mu or sigma squared. Again, I am emphasizing when you are writing down a hypothesis or a statement, you are involving the population mean or the population variance. You are not using the sample mean and sample variance when writing down the hypothesis. Okay. Roughly, you can say that hypothesis will involve mu or sigma squared. It will not involve x bar and s squared in the hypothesis statement. Even though further analysis will be done with the sample mean and the sample variance, the x bar and s squared do not find a mention in the hypothesis statements. So, I said hypothesis statement and then I am saying hypothesis statements. The reason for that is there are two hypothesis statements okay, and neither of them involve x bar or s squared. Both of them involve either mu or sigma squared. Right. So, the doubt that may be in everybody's mind is we know all right hypothesis is a statement or a guess or a speculation, but it does not mean that uh, all the people would uh, make the same kind of hypothesis statements. Well, the hypothesis statement is uh, usually uh, binary guilty or not guilty. It is uh, having a population mean value of 50 units say 50 percent marks or it is either greater than 50 percent or less than 50 percent. So, the hypothesis statements are rather simple. So, you can go ahead and make a hypothesis statement without uh, bothering too much and if the sample data does not uh, support your initial speculation or initial hypothesis, then the uh, hypothesis statement uh, stands to be refuted or rejected. Then you can always go back and look at the uh, problem history and uh, problem data and uh, come up with a new hypothesis. The preliminary hypothesis test you carried out will give you valuable clue as to uh, what should have been the proper hypothesis statement. So, the hypothesis testing involves procedures which help us to decide whether the original hypothesis made may be accepted or rejected based on the information provided by the sample. So, you are using the information given or available in the sample to make a decision whether the original hypothesis statement is correct or not correct. So, we look at 
the difference between our assumptions and the evidence from the sample and then to decide whether the differences are statistically significant to warrant the rejection of the original hypothesis. For example, uh, you may be thinking that uh, the nuclear reactor supplied by a company is going to give you a mean power uh, output of 2.3 gigawatts, but the uh, plant is actually giving a mean power output of only 2 gigawatts. Okay. So, you are having 2.3 gigawatts as the uh, population parameter mu, whereas x bar is telling you it is only 2 gigawatts. So, the difference is minus 0.3 gigawatts. So, whether this difference is uh, statistically uh, significant enough to conclusively say whether uh, the uh, mean output from the reactor is uh, 2.3 gigawatts is an incorrect uh, statement or it is a correct statement. So, coming again, we look at the difference between uh, the x bar and mu. x bar is 2 gigawatts and uh, mu is 2.3 gigawatts. So, the difference is minus 0.3 gigawatts. So, we can see whether this difference of minus 0.3 gigawatts is statistically significant enough through hypothesis testing procedures. If it is statistically significant enough, then we can say that, okay, look, this uh, reactor which the company has supplied cannot uh, give a mean power output of 2.3 gigawatts as originally claimed. However, if the test shows it is statistically insignificant, then what we say is uh, based on the data which is available to me, I cannot really conclude that uh, the reactor uh, supplied by this company, XYZ company is not uh, supplying average power output of 2.3 gigawatts as claimed. Okay, there is insufficient evidence for me to actually reject the company's claim that the mean power output is 2.3 gigawatts. Again, I will like to emphasize that hypothesis testing concerns with the parameters of the probability distribution of the population and not with the sample. However, it relies on the data from the sample from the population of interest. Always please remember that uh, the hypothesis testing is all is subject to some uncertainty. Unless we examine the entire uh, population, we cannot conclude anything about the population with 100 percent accuracy or certainty. Since we are using samples to make inference upon the probability distribution of the population, we cannot be certain about our conclusions regarding the population parameters made using hypothesis testing. So, it's a small typo here, I will correct it. Okay. Since we are using samples to make inference upon the probability distribution of the population, we cannot be certain about our conclusions regarding the population parameters made during hypothesis testing. We are speculating on the parameters of the population. Can the mean value be this much? Can the variance be this much? And these are the population parameter values. So, after we take the information or evidence provided by the sample, we do some uh, test procedures and then we make a conclusion. Based on the evidence provided by the sample, I cannot conclude that this population parameter mean can be 50 units or I can say that right based on the evidence provided by the sample, I can conclude or accept the original problem statement that the mean is indeed 50. So, you are making a decision based on the evidence provided by the sample, but this decision cannot be considered to be conclusive or 100 percent fail proof. Hence, we agree that there is a certain 
uncertainty in our hypothesis testing and we quantify it. So, whenever we are speculating on the population parameter, the mean of the population can be this much or the variance of the population can be uh, this much. On what basis we are doing the speculation? We make these uh, es estimates or uh, assumptions regarding the population parameters from prior knowledge or experience, from prior experiments and now we check whether the process parameter has changed. Suppose we are having a machine which is operating at a certain power, other uh, settings of the uh, machine are also fixed. It is giving a average particle size of 50 millimeters. So, we are uh, using the machine for a long time and it has been working very well and uh, so the uh, average is very, very close to 50 millimeters. So, we can say that me mean is equal to 50 millimeters. Suppose some uh, modifications have been made to the machine, uh, maybe it went for a maintenance check or some part was replaced, then again the uh, machine is uh, grinding the raw materials and providing particle sizes. Now, we want to know whether the previous uh, mean value of 50 millimeters is again met by the machine or because of the process modifications, it is uh, producing particles which are lower than the uh, original mean value or greater in size than the original mean value. So, we know from prior knowledge or experience, from prior experiments we have collected or accumulated large amount of data and after some modifications we want to see whether the process parameter has changed. Also the uh, parameter may be uh, set based on a mathematical theory or a model and uh, we want to verify whether the data agrees with the model predictions. A parameter is proposed from engineering or design specifications or contractual obligations and we have to find whether the current data supports the parameter. For example, the XYZ company was guaranteeing 2.3 gigawatts from its uh, nuclear reactors as the average power output. So, that is based on uh, contractual obligations or uh, design specifications and uh, then we actually monitor the uh, reactors performance and uh, take a random sample and uh, find the mean power output. We can check whether uh, the uh, uh, mean power output of the reactor is actually 2.3 gigawatts or lower. So, what is the procedure involved in hypothesis testing? We first take a random sample from the population of interest. Again, this is a most crucial step. Sometimes uh, its importance is underestimated. You cannot uh, blame the final decision if uh, or the final outcome if the sampling was not done properly. Compute the uh, relevant test statistic from the sample. The relevant test statistic we are familiar with so far are the sample mean and the sample variance. We really have not uh, looked into any other test statistic, but the sample mean and sample variance would do just fine for us, including our analysis of design of experiments. Well, you must be uh, curious what are we doing here now? I mean, where is it uh, going to tie up with uh, design of experiments? I am eager to learn design of experiments. I would uh, suggest you to be a bit more patient. We will be definitely looking at design of experiments very shortly. And you will really appreciate all the uh, concepts we have learnt so far when you see them 
being applied in design of experiments. Use the test statistic to make a decision about the original or null hypothesis. So, I have introduced the new term original or null hypothesis. Let us now get into the defining of original or null hypothesis. So, many real life problems encountered in engineering may be formulated in terms of hypothesis testing problems. Hypothesis testing forms the foundation of more advanced experimental design techniques. That is what I told you just a short while back that whatever uh, we are uh, learning now hypothesis testing the T distribution, chi square distribution, the F distribution will find immediate applications in uh, the design of experiments. In design of experiments as well as in uh, linear regression uh, tools, we will be extensively seeing the uh, application of the T test, the F test and also the 95 percent confidence intervals. So, hypothesis testing and confidence interval estimation of parameters are fundamental tools applied at the data analysis stage in comparative experimentation. There are two types of hypothesis, one cannot exist without the other. The first hypothesis which is usually made or initially made is the null hypothesis and the second uh, hypothesis is its contradiction. Um, the alternate hypothesis. In defining two hypotheses, we imply that the rejection of the null means automatic acceptance of its alternate. So, why do we make the two hypothesis statements? So, any null original or initial statement or hypothesis is a speculation. So, we cannot uh, claim that it is 100 percent accurate. To allow for the uh, existence of an alternative to the uh, original statement we have made, we propose or state the alternate hypothesis. There are uh, different ways of disagreeing. Uh, the one way is a kind of neutral manner saying that I do not agree with you. The uh, second uh, way of saying is what you are saying is not uh, correct, actually the performance is better than uh, what you are saying. And uh, the third way of uh, rejecting the original statement or uh, rebutting the original statement is the performance is lower than what you are claiming. So, there are uh, different ways to disagree. One is simply saying it is different or being bit more specific saying it is greater than or less than. So, normally we are not uh, talking here of uh, philosophical uh, arguments, we are uh, talking about uh, entities that may be quantified into numbers and mathematical formulae. So, there are two hypotheses, one is the initial original or the null hypothesis and the second is the alternate hypothesis which is so stated that it contradicts the null hypothesis. How do you propose the null hypothesis. This is a very interesting uh, issue here. You are going to uh, a company after finishing your uh, B tech or M tech. You are uh, very enthusiastic and uh, bubbling with energy and you find a process being done in the industry and uh, you feel look this process is not being done uh, correctly if I make this modification the process will run much more uh, smoothly or uh, much more efficiently. Then you go and uh, tell it to the management 
the management uh, of course welcomes uh, new ideas but that would uh, mean also a lot of commitment from their side in terms of manpower time money and uh, they also do not know how the customers or the client would uh, react to it so the management uh, would be rather inclined to uh, let things uh, continue as they were probably not as efficiently as you are considering but uh, there is no immediate uh, shutting down of the plant or uh, revamping of the process so things uh, will continue to run as usual so you have to provide a strong convincing evidence for them to stop everything and uh, make the process modification even when you are uh, doing experiments in the uh, laboratory for your ms or phd research program you have to be skeptical you have to assume that none of the uh, variables you are uh, investigating is going to affect your process response well this is sort of uh, in a com contradiction or opposition to our uh, aim of doing the experiments we want to clearly show that some of the variables or all the variables we are investigating is impacting the process in a strong manner but a true researcher will always be a skeptic he will have to say initially that there is no change or status quo is being maintained even if you change the variables it's not going to affect the response of course this may not be true because obviously when you change something there is going to be a uh, effect on the response judge uh, sitting in the uh, court may have to make the most important decision of all whether to allow a person to continue to live or uh, to be sent to the gallows because he has apparently committed a crime so the judge's uh, initial uh, attitude will be look this person is uh, innocent the prosecution has to provide evidence beyond a reasonable doubt so that uh, person may be convicted so the null hypothesis is sort of a stabilizing one it keeps us uh, grounded and uh, is based on the concept that there is no change or status quo is being maintained a guideline for choosing a null hypothesis is when a new claim is being made the nullification of that claim is taken as the null hypothesis according to ramachandran and sokos the nullification or the contradiction of the claim is taken as the null hypothesis okay so the claim is i am going to increase the uh, plant performance by 10% thereby making you a profit of uh, 1 million dollars per annum so that is a new claim being made the management is uh, cool to the idea and say that uh, look your uh, claim is not uh, going to make a difference the plant will continue to run as before so the null hypothesis is always the nullification or the neutralization of the claim that is being made anyway we uh, cannot live in speculation we have to try out different ideas and then we have to come to a conclusion after hypothesis testing we conclude that the uh, null hypothesis cannot be true then we reject it in favor of the alternate hypothesis if the uh, alternate hypothesis is not true then it means that we cannot reject the original hypothesis we are not making an absolute statement that the null hypothesis is correct 
we have to say perhaps in a legal uh, terminology that enough evidence was not provided to establish beyond reasonable doubt that the null hypothesis is wrong. I am repeating enough evidence that could establish beyond reasonable doubt that the null hypothesis is wrong was not provided. Hence, there is no sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. We are not claiming or we are not stating that the null hypothesis is true. We are only saying that sufficient evidence was not provided to reject the null hypothesis. We use the sample data and identify a test statistic which is a function of the sample measurements using which we try to establish the null hypothesis or its alternate and subsequently make a decision. So, so far we have seen what is meant by a null hypothesis and what may be the forms that may be taken by the alternate hypothesis. Now, we have to uh, see how to actually go about carrying out the hypothesis test procedure. So, when you formulate the hypothesis statements, uh, we can take an example uh, from the uh, legal side. So, as I said uh, previously, the null hypothesis is the person is innocent. The prosecution vehemently uh, wants to prove the case and uh, send the uh, charged person to jail they have to come up with suitable and clinching evidence. So, they are working towards the rejection of the null hypothesis. The management is making a null hypothesis that the process modification is not going to make a difference. Whereas, you the originator of the idea will be actively looking for suitable evidence to indeed prove that your concept is correct and the null hypothesis can be rejected. So, if the prosecution is unable to provide evidence beyond reasonable doubt that the person is guilty, then the person is released on the grounds of insufficient evidence to prove his guilt rather than the firm statement of his innocence. It is indeed probable that the person was guilty, but the prosecution simply could not establish his guilt. So, there can be different types of uh, alternate hypothesis. If the alternate hypothesis contradicts the null hypothesis by saying that the parameter under test is not equal to what was proposed in the null hypothesis, it is called as a two sided alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis proposes a statement that the population parameter is equal to a certain value. The alternate hypothesis considers the possibility that based on the evidence provided the population parameter may be less than the uh, proposed value or greater than the proposed value. Because we are talking about uh, random phenomena, when there is a negative deviation on one occasion, on another occasion there may be a positive deviation. So, in order to account for such kind of uh, deviations, we are using the alternative hypothesis in terms of not equal to. The original null hypothesis may say that the uh, population mean value is 50. The alternate hypothesis may be the population mean value mu is not equal to 50. Under such situations, we allow for the possibility that the population mean may be greater than 50 or less than 50. So, we are uh, allowing for the two sided possibility. So, it is called as a two sided alternative hypothesis. If the alternative or alternate hypothesis claims that the parameter is either greater than or lesser than what was claimed in the original hypothesis, 
it is termed as a one sided alternative hypothesis. For example, in the nuclear reactor case, you are having a null hypothesis of mu is equal to 2.3 gigawatts. The sample mean is showing you a, a value of 2 gigawatts. So, the uh, company or the industry which is uh, using that reactor sees red and uh, claims that uh, no, 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 the uh, parameter value of mu of 2.3 gigawatts is not correct. The actual uh, average power output from the reactor is less than 2.3 gigawatts. It will not even consider the possibility that the uh, mu the average power output can be greater than 2.3 gigawatts. It will say it will be less than 2.3 gigawatts. So, this is a one sided alternative hypothesis using the less than sign in the alternate hypothesis statement. All right. What about uh, the alternate hypothesis involving greater than? For example, uh, you are monitoring the uh, air quality in a particular place where recently there has been lot of industrial activity. So, the null hypothesis which the uh, new industrial uh, companies will be interested in is that there is no change in the uh, pollution levels the average pollution levels are the same as they were originally before the industrial activities started. I am using the advanced uh, or state of the art pollution control measures. So, I am not letting out really uh, any toxic uh, gases to the atmosphere. So, the uh, mean uh, population levels of the pollutants in the ambient air is the same, it is unchanged. But the uh, pollution monitoring uh, agency may be uh, more interested in uh, proving that the uh, mean uh, value cannot be uh, what was originally, it has indeed gone up. In which case, you are going to use the greater than sign in the alternate hypothesis. So, the null hypothesis will be mu is equal to mu naught, the original or the base line value. The alternate hypothesis for the industrial pollution problem is mu greater than mu naught. So, after the industrial activity has started, there has been an increase in the pollution levels. That is what the environmental pollution agency will be looking for. It is really not going to be interested in uh, the possibility mu less than mu naught. It is interested only in mu greater than mu naught. So, again we will be going in for a one sided alternative hypothesis and uh, that would involve the sign of greater than in the present case. Okay. So, after the uh, judge has uh, passed a decision uh, regarding the uh, innocence of the uh, accused, okay, either way he may have found him not guilty or may have found him guilty. So, there will be always uh, a nagging question, did I uh, release the person uh, wrongly or did I uh, send an innocent person to the prison. So, these kind of doubts will always be there. So, whenever we have made a decision with the best of intentions, we still may have the doubt that our decision was not correct. So, how to quantify these kind of uh, errors in decision making? Uh, from a common sense point of view, we make a decision after uh, giving uh, a suitable margin, okay, so that we do not make the wrong decision. Okay. The margin may be quite lenient. For example, uh, if students are writing an exam, 
our uh, expectation uh, would be the students should get uh, at least uh, 60 percentage marks to pass the course. For example, the exam is so easy, in my opinion they should uh, get at least 60 percent if they have really understood something from this course and uh, then pass it. But uh, we set a pass mark of 40 percent just to be on the safe side, so that uh, no person who has reasonably understood the course is failed. So, the errors in decision making are uh, wrongly uh, accepting the alternate hypothesis. So, the null hypothesis in fact was correct, but you have uh, accepted the alternate hypothesis wrongly. The second one may be failing to reject the null hypothesis by rejecting its alternate. Which of these two uh, is a more serious error. Let us again take the court case and uh, the first uh, error wrongly accepting the alternate hypothesis would mean the person was in fact uh, innocent, but uh, the uh, judge based on the evidence presented to him wrongly uh, accepted the prosecution's uh, arguments and sent the innocent person to jail that is a very serious uh, issue or the management uh, got carried away by your uh, uh, technical presentation and uh, accepted your idea, spent lot of money and unfortunately, the idea did not really work. Okay. There was not any significant or noticeable uh, improvement in the process after the modifications were carried out. Okay. The second uh, error is to fail to reject the null hypothesis by rejecting its alternate. So, what it really means is the person was indeed uh, guilty, but uh, the judge uh, released him. Okay. So, what really uh, happened was the uh, guilty person got away free. When you compare the two types of uh, errors, the first one is uh, pretty serious. Okay. The second one is also an error, but it is not as serious as the first error. The first error uh, an innocent person was sent to jail or he was hanged or whatever and in the second case the guilty person uh, got away. So, which of these two is more serious? you yourself will be able to answer. So, our decisions are associated with uncertainty. There are also probabilities associated with the wrong decisions. The probability of uh, rejecting uh, the null hypothesis when it is in fact true is called as the type 1 error and it is termed as alpha. We have seen alpha earlier when we were constructing the confidence intervals. The probability of accepting H naught when it is in fact false is the type 2 error and it is termed as beta. So, probability of rejecting H naught when it is true is called as the type 1 error and it is denoted by alpha. The probability of accepting H naught when it is uh, in fact false is called as the type 2 error and it is termed as beta. Maybe I should uh, write the probability of failing to reject H naught when it is in fact false is called as type 2 error. So, when we come back after a small break, we will be uh, looking at this table and uh, we will see after a few minutes. <laughs>